July when we came by, so it was much darker. The sun wasn't even anywhere near popping over. I said, you have, you have a 400 speed film, and if you're lucky and have a zoom lens, you have a chance for a great picture because I suggested they don't go any closer. You don't want to trample the plants or get close to the bear. So, Ryan, if you're going to take It's my big eye. Screwing up my videos. He was pacing back and forth, back and forth, about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. And I just happened to have that day, I was ruined on that shot. In fact, let me ask you this question. If you're photographing into a bright light source, like the sun, or overcast days we have a lot of bright white sky, what might happen to your picture? Would you get an underexposure or overexposure if you allowed that bright source to I blue to the sky. But I think what I'll do is add what they call the sunset filter. But it works for sunrises too, I'm sure. So let's get that out. And I'm going to add a little touch of color. <coughs> this is a brighter orange on top and a much lighter orange on the bottom. Let's put that in. And I'll just push it down until it matches where the other one is that's been set for The reason it is such a great shot is it is the right time of the day. And Ansel Adams understood this, that lighting is everything in photography. To get the right lighting at the right time on the right scene is one of the most surprising pictures. And this is the right time. You come by here at the moon. Not a picture. Okay, now we have to get the leaves to try to block. Well, if you can, yeah. If that would be my suggestion. Block those silly signs that they put up. One of them says you must use a life preserver and when you go rafting. That means you, fellow, when you go rafting. Oh. Uh, <laughs> now, one other thing, let me point out to you, look at how nice, this is called side lighting. We talked about back now. look at how nice it is, how outlines his face and his hat. Look how he pops out against that dark pine tree back. Uh, it was built, uh, I think, in the 1890s, I believe. And it used to be located down, about a mile downstream, closer to the water until it became uh, flooded so many times that they picked it up about 30 or so years ago and brought it to this mm -hmm. present location. But this past year it almost got flooded again because of all the water was way up, way up here into the, all the really? meadows. Well, we couldn't have taken that picture this morning. It was totally way up over in the meadow. It was so high. Mm -hmm. Almost touching the bottom of this bridge. It Water splash. It's kind of fun. Anyway, take a look at, on, on a vertical shot with this nice tree and the shadowed foreground, the dewy grass, and a silly kid up there splashing. Uh, foreground on the opposite bank over there. Uh, we see a little reflection of the waterfall, the lower falls in the water, by the way. There are a lot of mosquitoes. Help out if you see some landing on somebody. Don't reach out and strike it, however. <laughs> Give them a little warning. Anyhow, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, of course, the waterfall scene itself is magnificent, so quite as effective. But here you get maximum effectiveness now. <clears throat> now, in some instances here, uh, you may not want to get too dark a blue sky. And what's nice about the filter is you can stop part way in between. You don't have to go maximum. The reason is that the skies in Yosemite are already so blue that if you get too dark, The other morning, it was an artist sitting right here on this log, too, uh, painting this scene, too. It's really a lovely, lovely scene. Get a little of that beautiful tree bark and all that stuff. Are you ready, kiddo?